Okay, we're going to go through brain regions on an MRI. MRI is a modality of choice to view the brain. These are the three main views that are provided for each patient. Remember to identify the right and left for the patient. For an axial view, you are looking as if the patient is in the MR scanner and you're looking standing at their feet looking up toward the head. This is the right side and this is the left side. The coronal view is as if you are looking facing the person. So their right and left are opposite to yours. On the sagittal view, anterior and posterior is a bit more obvious. These are the brain features to look for as we scroll through different views. Starting with the coronal view, we will look for the features listed on the right. However, not every feature can be seen at any given position. However, they're all listed on each slide. This is our first coronal view. We will sequence posteriorly for a total of six views. At this very anterior position, we can find the frontal lobe and the division between the cerebral hemispheres called the longitudinal fissure. Now we've shifted posteriorly slightly as evidenced by the emergence of the lateral ventricles noted with an L. We still see the longitudinal fissure at the top, but now we see a lateral fissure separating the frontal lobe from the temporal lobe. Even farther posterior, we see the lateral ventricles with the gray matter of the basal ganglia just below and the corpus callosum just above where the white matter of axons allow the two hemispheres to communicate. You can still see the longitudinal and lateral fissures. Deep to the lateral fissure is a brain region called the insula, which we see just above the temporal lobe. Farther posterior, we see the brain stem emerging. The lateral ventricles are flattening out with a prominent corpus callosum and septum pellucidum, dividing the two ventricles. We also see nicely see the body of the dens of C2. But we're far enough back that we no longer see the frontal lobe. Now we're at the level of the parietal lobe with the temporal lobe under the lateral fissure. Here is the insula. Centrally, we see two round structures of the thalami, plural for thalamus, with a portion of the third ventricle seen between the two. For the brain stem, the midbrain with the cerebral aqueduct in the middle as a black dot and the wide belly of the pons below. From the most inferior point, let's follow the features without labels first. We see the spinal cord merge into the medulla, then to the pons with the cerebellar peduncles flaring out to the side, up to the midbrain with the black dot of the cerebral aqueduct bringing cerebral spinal fluid down to the not yet seen fourth ventricle. Again, the top we see the longitudinal fissure separating the hemispheres between the parietal lobes and the lateral fissure separating the parietal from the temporal lobe and then the posterior region of the thalamus and the already noted brainstem, including the midbrain, pons, and medulla. This is our last coronal view. The posterior location lets us see the parietal lobe, occipital lobe, and cerebellum. Let's look at these features on a sagittal plane, starting the most laterally, then moving directly to the mid-sagittal view next. In this very lateral sagittal view that is similar to a diagram from a textbook, we can see the lobes, the frontal, temporal, parietal, occipital. Between the frontal and temporal lobe, we see the lateral fissure, also called the sylvian fissure. Between the frontal and parietal lobes is the central sulcus. Finally, at the posterior inferior region, we can see the lateral surface of the cerebellum. In the standard mid-sagittal view, which is most familiar from textbook images, we can see the lobes, the frontal and the parietal and the occipital with the central sulcus between the frontal and the parietal. In the central region or diencephalon, the circle represents the thalamus and the yellow triangle is the hypothalamus. We can also see all three regions of the brainstem, midbrain, pons, and medulla, with the cerebellum posterior to that. Finally, let's look for these features on the axial plane starting from the most superior position at the top of the head, moving inferiorly through five slices. We see the longitudinal fissure from anterior at the top to posterior. Remember that this person is lying on their back and you're looking up from the level of their feet. The frontal and parietal lobes are visible. 
Now on the lateral surface, we see the central sulcus that separates the frontal and parietal lobes. This is a very important landmark to find as the motor control of skeletal muscles are on the gyrus anterior to that and the sensory input from the body is received by the parietal gyrus posterior to that sulcus. A little lower, you can see the dark spaces of the lateral ventricles with the anterior and posterior horn. You can even see fuzzy structures called the choroid plexus that make the cerebral spinal fluid. Anterior to the anterior horns of the lateral ventricles is the corpus callosum, specifically the genu. The posterior aspect of the corpus callosum is found posterior to the posterior horn, specifically the splenium of the corpus callosum. More centrally would be where you'd find the thalamus. Cerebral structures, we still see the frontal and parietal lobes. Now the insula emerges. Posteriorly, we see the occipital lobe. Now we have reached the level where we begin the brainstem, specifically the midbrain, which looks a bit like a Mickey Mouse icon. The black dot in this region is the cerebral aqueduct bringing fluid from the third ventricle to the fourth ventricle below. Of note, there are two little circles on the anterior surface of the midbrain or between the ears. These are the mammillary bodies. We see the inferior portion of the frontal lobe and the main portion of the temporal lobe, as well as the occipital lobe. This yellow portion here is a lower portion of the hypothalamus. Now we see the distinctive lines of the cerebellum appear, as well as the rounded belly of the pons. Between the two structures is the fourth ventricle, and we have the temporal lobe as well as the occipital lobe. Finally, we're at the level of the medulla that looks a bit like a four-leaf clover.